Snooker's newest Hall of Famer, John Virgo, has just about seen it all in his 50 years in this sport, but rarely has a crucible final provided such a clash of snooker cultures and playing styles as it does today. Calculation meets cavalier. Percentage perfection plays devil may care instinct as rock steady Mark Selby tackles the Luca snooker played by Belgium's Luca Purcell. Welcome to the Kazoo World Championship final. It's a game won and lost by the finest of margins. A game demanding expertise and technical precision. Artistry of the finest order. Sport is about passion, about people, it's about moments. And for that, nothing comes close to the final weekend in Sheffield. The Steel City, where players test their metal, focus, forged, impenetrable. The Corridor where every sound is heightened, every footstep, lungs pump, hearts beat, waiting for that door to reveal the roar. Heroes emerge, the crowd rises, then nothing. Session one, a collision of nervous energy as two maestros meet. Game on! The crowd ripples. Is there a gap? There's always a gap. Bit of right hand side, cue back and strike. Hang on, where's the cue ball going? The ball runs and runs and runs. Sometimes it's like swimming against the tide. So smile, laugh, look on in disbelief. Only the most accomplished go all the way. The trophy belongs to the geniuses, to the precise, the audacious, the resilient. The World Championship final is home to brilliance. So today's the day. This is it. Another chapter ready to be written. Word perfect as ever, John. Word perfect as always. Two gentlemen who've lifted the trophy 13 times between them, Stephen Hendry and Steve Davis, back in the building just 12 hours after you left, guys. <laughs> Nicely done, looking fresh and ready to go. <laughs> Steve, what do you love about our lineup today? Uh, I think it's intriguing. Nobody in this room, including us two, know what's going to happen when these two players. Uh, bash up against each other. They, they're such diverse characters in the way they play. I think we're all looking forward to seeing how it unfolds. Stephen, energy drinks on tap for everyone in this oh. building today after a very late finish, 1 a.m. in the second of the semi-finals here. And Mark Selby just scraping across the line against oh. Mark Allen. Effects of that, what do you think they'll be? Um, well, he should have won it earlier, shouldn't he? You know? <laughs> True. At the end of the day. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> oh. <coughs> 16-10 up, he should have went early, but all, all joking aside, he's been here and done it four times. He's got the stamina, he's, it, it's been proven in the past that he's got the stamina to do whatever it takes to win this thing. He has. Uh, we've mentioned the contrast in styles. Now, the big question everybody's asking, can Mark Selby tame Luca Brassell in the way he's done to so many so often here? Yeah, it's like it's the half a million pound question, isn't it? Uh, can the style of one player affect the playing ability of the other? And I, we don't know the answer. That's why I think it is fascinating today. Um, 
What I would say from experience and watching as well is that it's probably easier for the slower player to play well against the faster player than the faster player to play well and find form against the slower player. But I hope that doesn't happen and I don't think it will do because both these players have played so well. They got to the final ability. I don't think anybody's going to crumble. Indeed. And it'll be interesting to see whether Luca Brasile himself engages in these tactics because he's been so cavalier, so dynamic mm. in beating Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course, with seven on the bounce and then that extraordinary comeback against CJ mm. Wee. What do you expect from him as to how he'll play it? I, I just hope he trusts his normal game. I don't think... I, I, I hope he doesn't try and get involved with Mark Selby. He's going to have to play good safety at some stage, but he's got to trust his game because I think it's good enough. I think he's playing well enough. OK, we are almost there, gents. The 2005 World Champion Sean Murphy is backstage in the practice room. Uh, and uh, tell us about the comings and goings there in the last few moments, Sean. Well, despite Mark's late finish this morning, here he is in the practice room warming up for the final this afternoon, running his same routine diligently going through those final preparations as all professionals do. But we talk about the clash of styles, clash of personalities. Luca's nowhere to be seen. Rather than getting in 20 minutes before, 30 minutes before, like most of us do, he's made a big thing about it this week. He hasn't been practising very much, not warming ver up very much, and table two in the practice room is completely empty. One thing's for certain, though, this clash of styles is going to make for a great match. This is the biggest comeback in the history of the Crucible Theatre. Look what it means to Luca Brassell. And eventually, he crept over the line. That's what it means. Relief, more than anything. I always surprise myself because I just never know. One minute I can be playing shocking, next minute I can all of a sudden get to the latter stages of a tournament from nowhere. Yeah, it's always a surprise. Yeah, it's like a dream come true uh, to be in the final, but especially the way it happened, you know. I think no one believed that I could come back, uh, including myself, to be honest. Great to see him fulfilling, obviously, the talent that we've all known he's had for many years. Just so natural, you know, it's just great to watch. Fantastic long potter, scores well. Just never know what you're going to get with him. He's just a machine, you know, he doesn't give up, everyone knows that, everyone knows the way he plays, he's incredible, I think. To beat him in the best of 35 is going to be very, very difficult. I will need to play my best and need to stay focused the whole game because if you lose focus, then he's going to get the better of me and it's going to be a big challenge for me and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's great to be out there playing, you know, and enjoying it. This time last year, obviously, that wasn't the case. I've realised there's more things to life than snooker, you know, health is the most important thing. Yeah, I'm definitely in a better place than where I was, which is nice. He plays every shot as if it's his last shot in his life. I just play my shots and if they don't go in, they don't go in. It's a complete opposite of mindsets and complete opposite styles of play, which I think will be fascinating for the people that are watching. Be a tough game. Hopefully, I can get through and uh, get to number five. If not, it would be great, obviously, for, for Luca himself and his family to, to get his first world championship on the board. So here we are backstage. 32 men have all waited it out here at the Crucible this year, but now only two are left standing. Mark Selby about to stride out into his sixth final here in total and uh, his first one way back in 2007. And there's Luca Brissell, a real moment of history. He was the youngest player ever to make it to the Crucible back in 2012 at the age of just 17. Now, 11 years later, will this be his coming of age at the World Championship? We are just about to find out the last few cautious moments of calm before they head into the cauldron of the Crucible Theatre, where our MC, Rob Walker, is waiting to get it started. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After 15 fabulous days of drama, heartache and glory, it all comes down to this. The first timer against the former champion, their paths converging here in Sheffield for this one chance of sporting history. It's time for the Kazoo World Snooker Championship Final. It's time to get the boys on the bays. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please welcome a player whose talent was born for the biggest stage of all. He has dazzled us with his brilliance and belief in Sheffield. Seven in a row against Ronnie, 11 in a row against C, the greatest comeback in Crucible history. And here he is, emerging for the most important match of his life. Give it up for the Belgian bullet, Luca Bracel. <laughs> And now to one of the all-time greats, a player whose determination has defined his life and career. This four-time champion has the heart of a lion. The lessons he learned from his father have served him well and will serve him well again. Here he comes, the jester from Leicester, Mark Selby! <laughs> So all smiles, we're on the start line of the final. It should take until tomorrow evening to enter the home straight with four sessions of snooker stretching before us and a best of 35 games match stretching, perhaps the full distance. And here they are, what a picture, what a memory for both. But what will happen from here? Ready for anything as ever are the 1997 world champion Ken Doherty and new Hall of Famer. John Virgo. Here we go, fellas. Thank you, Hazel, and good afternoon, everybody. Well, this does promise to be... Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, the first very frame. Very exciting. Luca Brissell. Final. Mainly Ken. I think just the ingredient of the Can two sure players. All off complete the start, opposite please. styles. And who will get the better? Yeah, that's the boring question, isn't it? Yeah, really. Oh, I can't wait for this. The interesting question is who's going to come out on top? Which style? Who's going to lift that trophy on Monday evening? I don't think... Luca will get involved, John. I think he's just going to play his own game. It's cavalier styled. It's served him so well in this championship. I don't think. Oh, well, he's not a bad start. <laughs> well, that's a good way to start the final. Yes, and a nice kiss on the brown. Chance to get to the table, get the Q arm going. Settle yourself down. No matter who you are, whether you, as Mark Selby's been in the final six times Five. or the first time, there'll be nerves out six. there. Well, decided to play down Eleven. for this red. Surprises me a little bit, particularly if the black doesn't go into the opposite corner. Twelve. So, OK, he's on the black. A little bit of a tester. But right in the heart of the pocket. Ninety. Yeah, just over. Shot the cue ball a little bit. Bit of a bridge over the reds. No problem. 20. It's quite interesting, isn't it, when Sean Murphy was in the practice room, John? Max Selby was in there for a good half an hour, warm up. Luca Brissell, nowhere to be seen. No practice whatsoever. 28. 
Now he'll use, leave the red over the corner pocket, try and go into the pack. Bring some reds into play, maybe. Yeah. And that's worked out OK. And this is the start you wanted, isn't it, in the final jump? Particularly, you know, I know he's, he's helped with the flute, but just to get, put a few balls, settle down very, very quickly. Thin of this, kind of control this cue ball. Didn't fancy yeah, just, just dropping it in. Played out a lot of left hand side. Played it beautifully. This could be the key shot now. This black to find position on the next red. Just rolled it in. And yes, it's impressive. As I say, there'll be nerves. So far, handling it very well. Forty-four. Wrong side of the blue, but there's a couple of reds adjacent to the blue, so he's not leaving himself too far away from the next red. Yeah, we talk about practice. I mean, he's been getting plenty of practice in the matches. <laughs> Funnily enough, I was coming over here about midday, and he got in the lift. He looked very casual, <laughs> baseball cap, and. And really looking forward to it. This challenge. Yeah, I think he's enjoyed the whole journey. 49. He's been in the 50. hotel every night after his matches, mixing with his friends. And, well, anybody who's in there, not a problem. Just loving it. I think it's helped him relax and maybe enjoy this championship. Well, three times he tried to get right side of the blue. We've got it this time. And there are two reds available to the left corner. Frame winning chance now. 61 points in front. Two more reds, and it'll be snook as required. Sixty-two. Just too straight on the black, so I had to play for this red in the middle. Sixty-nine. So already at snook is required, but this red all. Basically, keep Mark Selby in his chair. He knows that. I think Mark Selby likes coming back to the table and playing for snookers. What a start. 77. Absolutely fantastic. Only six minutes. Well, this will be some shot if this red goes in. Up into the yellow pocket. It's close. Luca Brussel. 77. Oh, it's not bad. OK, held by a fluke, but the rest of it was just sheer brilliance. Look at Brussel. Leads Mark Selby, 1-0. I think there's any nerves? Doesn't look like it, Steve, does it? <laughs> it is astonishing. Uh, if it's true that Luca hasn't had any practice on the practice tables before the start of this match, to come out and look as relaxed and as fluent as that is like is total enigma for, for doing that because you know, even the guilt you know you, you <laughs> want to practice beforehand to make sure you're prepared yeah I mean my, my schedule before a final would be come down about 10 o'clock in the morning from the hotel get half an hour's practice then go back to the hotel relax then come down maybe 20 minutes before and have two minutes literally to get your arm going so maybe he's maybe he's been here early in the morning this morning maybe no one knows I don't know probably not um, but he's had his two minutes. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, if, if Mark thought, well, maybe he'll be a bit edgy at the start of the match, that's uh, settled that score, hasn't it? Not a bit of it, absolutely. I, I did read that he, he said that he didn't want to practice before the championship in order to keep himself fresh and to come in with no expectations. Maybe it's a knew. formula maybe that he works. Maybe he's going to go the yeah. whole way. And he's played, he's played wonderfully relaxed so far, so why not continue in that vein? Absolutely. It just shows getting through that first round. 
was immense. It was, and he'd taken five attempts previous, couldn't get past the first round, and at the sixth attempt, he has absolutely flown. Thank you, in a second frame. It's Brussel. Mark Selby. One nil up. Yeah, just going back to that practice is quite unusual, John. I mean, it's totally unprecedented, isn't it, for any player coming into the World Championship not having much preparation or practice. And, uh, well, there's a lot to be said for it. It's not completely out of the, the ordinary. But it certainly served them. Served them very, very well. One. Well, that was a tremendous pot. Couldn't be certain he was going to not kiss into a second ball. Well, if that was a tremendous pot, what about the Brown? No holding back here. Five. Just no hesitation. And they're tough, as we know. Six. Yeah, another good pot, nice angle on the black. We know he's blessed with wonderful cue pair. Only go into the reds here, perfect angle. It's not too bad if this red just holds up for the middle pocket. Well, wow. has it gone too far? 30. Can he cut that red in. He can't. And he can get on the black as well. What a shot. 14. Well, he's got a shot at the black. No ideal angle, though. Another one right in the heart of the pocket. Where's the red ball going? He knew he was running into the red. 21. And that red in the bulk end, well, do you, well, we assume he plays the pot. Well, close. Luca Brussel, 21. Well, he's covered the red he played, but there's still one to the left corner. Intentions clear. No holding back. How can Max Selby respond? Needs a good opening pot here. Missed the red and black. Yeah, good start there. And he's on the blue. Excellent what? shot. Maybe run too far for the blue, but good pot nonetheless. Brown may be available. He's having a good look at it. Oh. Tried to pinch a bit of the pocket. I know we've been saying these pockets have been playing a little touch generous, but you can't take liberties with them. One. Yeah, it wasn't much room for the brown, but enough to pot it. There'll be one for Max Selby now. Luca Bissell immediately looking at the pack. Could play for the loose red. He is playing for the loose red. And then Six. needs a nice angle on the black. Seven. I don't think he's going to get one now, but the, there is a loose red on the right-hand side of the cluster. Worst way 
Well, it's available to the right middle. And if he's straight on it, no problem. Stun it in, play for the pink in the opposite centre. 40. We're looking for a little angle on the next colour, though, just to disturb something. This is the last of the easy reds. Fifteen. Little Grimace tells me he's come too straight on the pink. There you see it. Can't do much with that. I'm the only red that's slightly separated from the cluster. I don't see how I can get on that either. Just needed a slight angle on the pink so he could pot it and nudge reds into play. He's not got that now. Well, I know he's attacking, and I know he's set his stall out, but you can't push the ball out too much. <coughs> well, I was trying to screw off two cushions and possibly leave that end red to the far left corner, but not come far enough. 21. Just a safety. Yeah, just slide off the pack here, try and get that cue ball up behind the brown. It looks good, this looks very good. Look at Russell. 21. Ooh. Just cut it. Knuckle of the pocket. <laughs> now can Max Elby get that cue ball back behind the brown here? That's what it's target may be. Where's the cue ball going? Oh! <laughs> well, it's the perfect safety now. That's why we say this game's all about fractions. I mean, it was a fraction away from dropping in the pocket. Stayed in the jaws. It was quite a, a target, those reds in the middle of the table, but you've got to have the pace right. And if you slide by them, you could leave something on. Looking to lay on a red that would leave it safe. Can he find it? Twice across. Twice across, not got the right line, shorter Five pace. Minutes. Mark Selby four. Now, these two reds at the top, the one at the top, it looks like a possible plant to me. There you see it. From behind the pocket, you don't see the distance between the two reds, so... You've got to make it, but it looks... looks on. Yeah. Nicely converted. Just that cue ball hit the first red on the way through, otherwise he would have been nicer on this black, but he's still okay. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. Nervy start from Mark Selby one. The four time former champion. Yeah, he missed it, and I'm looking at the reds. So I could only assume he played for this red that Luca's going to play. What? I asked the question, you didn't have to play for it. I'm wondering where there's a plant to this corner. The way he played the black. Anyway, he's two loose reds to play for. And that's perfect. Eight. Nine. Yeah, two reds and blacks would put them 60 ahead. And just 59 remaining. So even if he doesn't get a split, 
Like Selby, when he comes 16. to the table, will need a snooker. But he doesn't want that, Luca. I'd like to. 17. Get a split on the reds if you can and finish the frame here. As I say, I just had a feeling that Mark Selby might have played for a plant. I may be wrong. Luca's having a look at it now. Hmm. Possibly could be made. <laughs> well, that gets into Luca is required, as Ken says. 60 points to leave, 59 remaining. 24. But you know you've got to be extra careful with Mark Selby when he only needs one snooker. Big target, isn't it? Behind the brown again. Matt got to make sure he sits the cushion on the way up. Look and that should be pretty 24. good. Very, very good indeed. Yeah, I think the thing is that Luca, we think of his quick fire play, his potting break, but, but he has a snooker brain as well. I mean, he's got a safety game when he needs it. Yeah. Maybe, John, that Luca's approach, maybe just getting Max Selby at the moment, just out of his comfort zone. We had an epic battle, of course, with Mark Allen last night. Finished almost at one o'clock in the morning. Very protracted frames. Lucas style of play, you would think would suit him better, but may sort of have him on the edge a little bit more. Yeah, I think the one thing from last night's match that I take is that uh, Mark Selby wasn't scoring that well. And he may get chances from Luca with the type of game that he plays, but you still got to pot the balls. Safety and put another red close to cushion. Got plenty of insurance here. Should Mark Selby pop the next red? Now, where's this cue ball going? Is it going in behind the brown this time? It looks close. Just can't enough to the pocket, so it's not a snooker. But how can Luca get it safe? Oh, well. <laughs> well, here's Mark Selby's chance. This is what he was looking for. And this red, no problem holding for the black. One. Yeah, nicely played. You may play for the red that's close to the left hand side cushion. Of the last of the three remaining reds, you'd like to keep the one that's close to this top cushion, yep. just beneath the black. Eight. And play for a snooker off that red. Interesting to see what he does here. Two reds, two blacks, keep the last red on the table, or maybe just take three reds and blacks and play for a snooker off yellow or green. 
It's only one four point snooker required, so. Nine. We could do either. <coughs> but that red, that's close to this top cushion. Well, it's, it's in a perfect position to lay a snooker. So black, red, black. Let's see what he tries. Sixteen. There. Seventeen. Well, he's left the angle on the black to play for the red along the top cushion. His choice. Yeah, I think he's maybe going to leave the red on the table, is he? Yeah, he is. I don't think he's going to pot this red. I think try and stun the red up 24. into the bulk area. Maybe leave that cue ball behind the black. And he's got him. He's got him. And it's a good snooker as well. Pass over 24. Tight behind the black. This is what Luca didn't want. He's in a spot of butter here. Yeah, many times we say, well, you pot this, snooker's required, but uh, that doesn't get you home safe. Not against Mark Selby. Well, I've put this line in, John, and the reason I put this in, I mean, it's difficult to hit it off two, maybe three cushions, but if he misses it, he won't leave the red, as long as this red doesn't go in off. And, of course, it can't be called a missed. And that was the only reason he played. It was much easier to maybe hit it off one cushion, but he played it like that. So if he missed it, he knew exactly what he was doing with the cue ball. But only 32 points now in the lead. Mark Selby taking the other option you have if your opponent makes a foul. Putting him in again. Open table this. He's trying to get the the bolt line as cover. Just kissing the yellow. I think there could be an edge of this red sticking out. Not to pot it, but to get the Upper hand in the safety exchange, an important one. Well, if he's got an edge, maybe using a lot of left hand side, try and hide that cue ball once again behind the brown. No. I mean, it was the perfect direction for the cue ball, a little bit harder. Just making sure the red was safe. But his double is on. The double is on. Oh. Has he got it safe? He has. Yeah, it was worth the risk, I suppose. Well, particularly the way Luca plays. But uh, well, if that cue ball had come a little bit further away from the ball cushion, it would have been an easy stun the red up the table, get the cue ball in behind the yellow. But he's going to have to lift the butt of the cue. He's not guaranteed to get the snooker. Yeah, he's sort of weighing up the option. If he plays that particular shot, if he doesn't get it right, the red may be on for Luca. So that's what he's weighing up in his mind at the moment. Do I play a different type of snooker, a different type of safety shot, make sure that the red is safe, or do I take a chance? He's keeping the red safe. Well, he's given Luca now a chance to play a more telling safety than that. Of course, the priority in all these situations, obviously you'd like to get good safety, maybe a snooker, but you must get the object ball safe. 
because everything's in the open. Oh, it's a dangerous free ball, is it? Maybe not. Mark Selby for. But I think Mark Selby asking him to play from there rather than it being okay. replaced. He's got the red safe. Not the best cue ball, but the red safe. So, Max Elby, such a genius in this type of situation. the red to have traveled a little bit further. Yeah, he's not really put any pressure on Luca with his last few safety shots. Now, you think about stunning this around the angle, you just got to be careful that red doesn't career into the, the yellow if you're playing that. That's the danger ball for me here. Yeah, there was one frame in that semi-final against Mark Allen. Mark Selby. 6-3 down, needed a snooker. Ended up getting it and changed the whole match around. That's what he'd be hoping for here, but that was a good return of safety from Luca. Yeah, that was excellent. He avoided the red running into the yellow. Good shot. Where's this red going? Is it going to run over the middle? Is it going to run over the middle? Nearly. We could try and screw the cue ball back towards the pink and green here. Well, once again, making sure of the red, but he's played a lovely shot. He's hit the, the cue ball behind the blue. Excellent shot. Yeah, I mentioned before, he's not a one-trick pony, isn't Luca? Now, Mark Selby, he'll be playing this with pace. It's no good coming off the side cushion, just rolling up to the red, because then you'll be in more trouble. But playing it with pace, you've got to catch it just right. You'll be hoping to get right in to the back of this red and kick it up the table and leave the cue ball there. But if he doesn't, he's not certain to get this safe. But he played it perfectly. He played it perfectly, good shot, and a good result. Yeah, great shot. This red does cut. Good effort. And once again, he's got the red safe. That was a good shot from Luca Bissell. Pot comes safety. Yeah, and just that type of shot there from Luca. Mark would have been sitting in his seat thinking, 
he was very close with that. He wasn't a mile away, and as you say, he's really hit that well. So it puts pressure on Mark's safety. He knows if he leaves any kind of opportunity for Luca to pop the red, he's going to go for it. So sometimes it can get you thinking you've got to get ultra safe. Well, he's a bit fortunate there. He's hampered Luca by the pink, otherwise he'd have been taking this on. Yeah, and the problem if he does take it on, the cue ball may be running into the black if he misses it, so. It's a dangerous shot if he does take it on. He's overcut it. And it's settled for that. And getting that brown tighter to the right hand side cushion will help him as well. Just got in behind it, could kick it up the table. Luca can do the same, but he's just got to be careful that this red doesn't run into the green. Well, can he see a thin edge? I didn't think so. So it's bought cushion. Got to avoid that red running into the green. And he will settle for that. Say that again. It's a tough shot. This Max Albi is left with red very close to this top cushion. Yeah, looking for Fun. an edge. No miss. Well, would you believe it? Look at myself. It's back to snooker required. Well, my mistake. That's why the miss has been called. <laughs> 32 no. points of difference. Yeah. Look. 35 remaining. So he needs to hit it this time. Otherwise he will need a snooker. Played out very well indeed. Good cue ball. And he's got the red safe. Tap on the table from Luca and appreciation. Doesn't want this red to go over this corner pocket. It's traveled just far enough. Yeah. Nice right of object ball. He's matching them, John, here. He certainly is, and it's amazing, isn't the contrast? Yeah. Mark giving everything thought, having a look at all the options. Luca just sees the shot, <laughs> gets down and plays it. And played it well. Oh, have a look at this for a shot. What a shot he's played there. This is brilliant safety from both players. 
to a cushion escape. You'd think it'd be aiming to hit it full, but needs to get it safe. Played to hit it full. He's left a half chance. Take this red on. That's the last time a pop was made. It was coming up to 15 minutes now. But he can take the red on. The cue ball will be coming down towards this black. Yeah, good shot. Now is he on the black? He may be on it for the middle. Mm. He's unlucky there. Yeah, he's got to pot the black, of course. If he doesn't, he'll need a snooker. Just checking the scoreboard. 31 points of difference. It's got to be blue or higher, the colour. Blue ball. Well, what a big shot. So early in the match. Got to go in. Oh, that was asking a lot. That was asking an awful lot. Mark Selby won. But he saw that as a chance to steal the frame and went for it all out. Snooker's needed now. <laughs> and no way back to the table with that yellow going in. I mean, he might still play on, so make certain of this green. Make certain of the green. Well, what a start this is, Ken, for Luca Purcell. Yeah. Explosive. Thanks. Well, this is what he would have been hoping for. Wonderful Nine. cue par. In fact, he's overhit it. <laughs> but he won't mind. Mark Selby will give referee Brendan Moore the nod. He does. The blue has not gone in, but Luca Purcell won't mind about that. Great start from the Belgian bullet. He leaves the former champion, two frames to nil. Yep, Luca won the first frame in six and a half minutes, and we have had what well, that was t 32 minutes for that uh, for that frame there. And I guess that underscores how much Luca is going to have to put himself clear in these frames. He, he obviously had done the running in that one, but just left enough room for Selby to chase, Stephen. Yeah, it's going to be important if possible. Okay, he got to 60 ahead with 15 hours, but didn't have a red to go for, but about 20 odd minutes then went by until he finally secured the frame so over two days and four sessions that's going to that's going to the win in those frames is going to be very important for Luca what can we tell about Mark Selby's form so far from the opening couple of frames Steve well I, I don't think he played wonderfully well to get over the line uh, last night I think he's not in the best form coming into this final or perhaps in the worst form he's ever been coming into the final and so you know maybe you could make the case if ever Luca's going to beat Mark Selby in the final of the world championship it's this year because he does look slightly more vulnerable in the long in the long game um, but we, we know he's a great grafter mm. but it was interesting I thought was Luca Brasel was left with a, a cross double you know where he could have tried to protect his lead Luca just went for it yeah. and then Mark Selby was left roughly the same shot and and didn't go for the cross double which could have paid dividends as well so there's always going to be a slight difference but Luca's not changing his game at the moment which yeah is which is interesting really significant interesting. isn't it and, and the attitude towards winning and losing couldn't be more different between these two guys could it absolutely but worrying for Mark Selby is the easy shot he's missing last play. night and, and today already easy brown and black off a spot there we go. Good length with the cue ball. There is a red that is available to this right corner. The obligatory red, but tight under the cushion. Never easy. Potted from Mark Selby needs to stop shot the ball line. It will. Great opener. Well, it's just marvellous queuing. But look at this tight under the ball cushion. 
kept so still. And kept the cue ball short of the bulk line. Now, can he score? That's what the boys were saying in Three. the studio. I'm not scoring enough. And taking advantage Four. of his chances. <laughs> Miss Brown, Miss Black in the last frame. It's a good chance this. Eleven. Twelve. Nineteen. Looks to have landed nicely on this red. Twenty. And whenever you land nicely on a ball, invariably you're good on the next shot. And he's nicely on this black. Got a red to the left middle, if nothing else. Well, maybe playing the cannon here. That's what he did. You always trust a little bit to luck. And I think he's on a red to the left corner. That's all you're looking for. An easy pot to carry on with. Twenty-eight. Just got a little bit of work to do here with the cue ball in potting this black. Just a little bit lower than his ideal. Yeah, just having a look there. He's got to play a little cannon to hold the cue ball here. Digging down. Which makes the pot a little bit more difficult, but he was up off that straight away. Another miss black off the spot. Well, first glance, he played the cannon, but didn't get on a red, so he's been fortunate. This red does cut, but tricky. But it's there, and he's landed on the green. Got a couple of reds to land on here. Left Green. of the pink. Another red into the left corner is available. Right of the pink. Now, uh, how's this? He'll settle for that. Great shot. Mm, just one run here, John. He's got a nice angle on this red. Could he play for the black? Get the black on its spot. He could play for the pink into the right centre, but. This red into the right corner, drop on the the black into the same pocket, get it on the spot. Yeah, there's certainly value in doing that. But he didn't feel as though Five. he wanted to play such a delicate shot. And the pink is available to the left corner. And if the pink spot isn't then not available and goes on the black spot, perfect. Eleven. Twelve. Well, the way the reds are split here, there's no needs for any cannons or 
to develop any. 18. They're all open. 19. Oh, that needs to run. Just got there. Not the best 25. positional shot. But read nicely in. Now, can he hold this blue? Just pot it and hold in the middle of the table for these two reds. Doesn't really want to be playing cannons at this moment. Well, he couldn't hold, so I'll play for one of them in the middle. That blue has now put him three points ahead. 31. He'll need these five remaining reds to clinch the frame. 32. I think the pink will be going back on its spot, so... He's a good positional shot here. Well, he's getting through the ball, Ken, so beautifully. No yeah. sign of tension in the arm here. No, not at all. 38. Getting a lot of action. Well, as you said, he's striking the ball. Such conviction and confidence. 39. The top red of the tree will pot into this bottom right corner pocket. And the bottom red will pot into the left corner. So, as I said, it's just coming around to have a look at that red, but it certainly does pot. 45. I was thinking a couple of shots ahead here. There you see it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he plays for here. I mean, obviously you think you play for the pink. But if he had the right angle, he could drop behind the black. Oh, he's overcut it. He's overcut it. Oh, it dropped. 46. <laughs> Only the slow pace. That's why it dropped. 51. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely touch of side spin. Maybe the right hand side just to help the cue ball towards this red. 52. Nearly went wrong, but it's worked out perfect. Perfect angle on the blue. And this will seal the deal in this frame. 57. This red. Wonderful. Oh, fruit machine. Now, as we said before, important now he pots these balls. Keeps Mark Selby in his seat. 68. What a start, Ken. Incredible. Absolutely incredible so far. He has... 72. Well, Mark Selby on edge. You would think it'd be the other way around. He's been in six finals. 77. Yeah, absolutely, but... As, we, as the boys in the studio were saying, didn't play well in the semi-final. And uh, I get the feeling he knows he's going to play well in this. He leads 3-0. What a start. Selby just not at the races as yet. And how important could this opening session be in the overall context of the match? I know it's very early, but a late finish from Mark last night and he just doesn't look on it as yet, Stephen. No, but I think 
look on the bright side, when he makes a mistake, it's only six minutes later he's lost a frame. So he's not having to sit there very long. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, that punishment was severe, wasn't it? Yeah. He missed another black off his spot. Six minutes later, he's lost a frame. Mm. So it, it's not going to be tiring being out, being out there no, a long time. But he's, <laughs> but he's, he's got his, he's got his, he, the, the first frames, he's, he's missed two blacks off his spot and an easy brown into, into the, 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 the green pocket that he can't afford okay. them. If, if, uh, if your opponent is punishing you very quickly and the frames start to slip away mm. and you're struggling with your game, that's the worst thing mm. in, in that respect. I, I know you sort of like, it's but, not going to tire. But, yeah, but it looks a bit intimidated. Well, it doesn't seem like he's queuing that well. And the pockets have been generous by fractions. Mm. Now, the cloth is wonderful. It's slippery and slidey and the balls are going off the jaws. You'd think that maybe that helps the player who's not queuing as well to actually get going. In the, but actually it works the other way. The player who's queuing the best, then they look like mm. buckets. Mm. Whereas a player who's struggling with this queue action, I think Mark Selby maybe a bit, all of a sudden still sees the problems of undercutting and overcutting. We had a couple of, uh, a couple of shots we're going to show you, perhaps in the interval four. about how, how, how Mark's Mark not queuing as well as he should do. And this man, Luca Brussel, is taking advantage. It's Selby to break. Brussel, 3 0 up. Yes, thanks, Hazel. Last frame before the mid session interval. When you'd feel, well, Mike Selby's got to get a frame on the board very, very quickly just to settle into this final. As the boys said, these frames are disappearing fast. Totally unlike the semi final. He's had chances, Mark Selby. A couple of blacks missed off the spot. Easy Brown as well. They would be definite shocks to the system. And I know it's an old saying, John, and you say it many, many times, is that you never settle into any match until you get that first frame on the board. Yeah, it couldn't, couldn't be any truer here. Yeah, well, absolutely. A couple of reasons. I mean, Luca Brissell is stealing his thunder. And for all the experience he's got, Mark Selby, he knows until you get a frame on the board, you know, you've got to put a bit of pressure on your opponent. Another lovely judge of line and length. And that's what I say with Luca. He's got a snooker brain. Mainly we see it when he's potting and break building. But if you ask him other questions, he can produce. Don't worry about that. That's what you get oh, with Lucas. Mark Selby for. Saw the shot quickly, got down and played it. And to be fair, he was only a fraction away from clipping the red as he intended. Now, let's see what Mark Selby can make with his chance. Nice red to go at and not much work to do with the cue ball. Just stun off the side cushion for the black in the same pocket. Again. Good opening pot, nicely on the black. Hmm. At least somebody liked that. <laughs> Eight. Nine. Yeah, nice angle on the black into the pack here. Maybe the left of the pack as we look. Just stun it in there and try and dislodge some reds. Oh, Just stay still, it. please. Well, he's played a delicate little cannon, but he could have played it into the pack and still been on those two reds. 60. Yeah, but I think he's just thinking, well, don't take any risks early on in this visit. Just get the cue arm going. 
It's a funny thing about snooker players. When, you, when you've not been scoring, you're aware of it. Mm. Sometimes you're frightened to go in the, the pack because you think you're never going to be on anything. Yeah. Yeah, but there's also it's got a flip side, John, isn't there? That when you have the opportunity, 24. you don't take it to go into the pack. You may not get a better one. Twenty-five. Definitely won't go into the pack off this blue because the pink is so far away from the reds. He once again play for one of the loose reds. Yeah, this causing a little bit of a problem. The pink, normally we say we'll hit the pink full in the face, but that pink Fit. is sort of guard, if you like, to the red. So, would you play up for a bulk colour? Possibly the green to come off the side cushion. 31. Well, he's playing for the blue, but if he's straight, where does the next red come from? Can he force a little angle off this blue for that red just to the right of the pack below the pink? Small window. Is he on it? He needs to slow up the cue ball. He's not on it. 36. Mistake. Mm, but that was had to be so precise. Go back to that shot in the black, Johnny. He had the opportunity. Should have gone into the pack. More confident. Mark Selby would have. No doubt. He's just settling oh, for so the 40 36. points. That's all he could do. But it might cost him. Yeah, I suppose the only thing, when he gets back to his seat, he didn't miss a pot. Just ran out of position. If Lucas thinking of going back to the box, just got to be careful he doesn't make contact with the pink here. No, he avoided it. Just a fraction short of pace with the cue ball to make it a telling safety. There's a possible cut on here. Needs the cover, not got the cover. So it just shows you that tempter that Luca Brissell left mark has resulted in him getting an opportunity. He'd like this to run. And it's run and it's perfect. Should he so wish? Yellow off the side cushion into the cluster. Oh, he'll settle for that. Okay, he's not the black. Towards his top cushion. Great. But at least he's on a red. Didn't get into the middle of the pack as he would have liked. Now, tricky pot this, maybe going into a red. May be able to just avoid the pack of reds. And yeah, now leads a little bit of luck. Yeah, Four. that'll do. Nicely negotiated. We well, had a quick look at the blue there, but if he plays the blue, he's gonna have to play a cannon. 
I think you, at the moment, just concentrate on reducing your rears in this frame. Didn't he strike that well? Didn't he strike that well? He's queuing beautifully Eight. at the moment. Just checking. The easiest ball to play on, just stun the red in, play for the pink to the left middle. He's just wondering where the pink's going to go. But if it leaves a nice angle, he could pop the pink and remove that red that's just below what looks like the pink spot area. Nice to see he's just giving this a bit of thought because it's not straightforward. He played a little cannon to stay on the pink. He's missed the cannon. Tricky black. Should he take it on? Tough. Just no hesitation. Is he on the red? He's walking round positively. He must be. 16. Oh, that was a wonderful shot. So brave. Oh, full well if he missed it. It was frame over. Now he's got a chance to steal it. <coughs> One more loose red. Oh, he's on it nicely. Now can he bring another red into play while well, potting this? Key shot to the frame this. If this goes right, he could win it at this visit. 25. Well, he couldn't have played it better than that. That was a wonderful shot. Just needs one more good positional shot. And it's all set fair. Yeah, has he got the angle just to try and avoid these reds? Got to dig into the cue ball. Needs to spin up, and he's played it. Another fantastic positional shot. 30. played if he has to hit them hard he does do but that shot to run off two cushions need queuing and he queued it beautifully two points behind probably need these four reds and possibly the yellow oh, it's high it was just high say. I must admit, I thought it was going to drift in on the nap, but it just stayed there. Almost. Well, it went the other way. Looked like it was in there, and then you see it just dripped towards the knuckle. Stayed there, as you said. He's not on it, Max Elby. Could attempt to swerve. The red below the pink pots. But that's a bit of a stretch. Time to swerve. Oh, oh, wonderful shot. And look at the cue ball. Got enough left hand side, just hit the knuckle and got top side of the blue. Great shot, this. Yeah, first big moment in the match. There'll be many more, I'm sure, I'm sure. Twists and turns. But Luca Brissell looks certain to be. Winning this frame, and now a chance for Mark Selby to do what he does better than anybody. Six. Steal a frame.
So. Well, we did have a look at those two reds to the right centre, but the angle he has on the black now. Oh, they were potable, but the angle he has on the black. You could just play a little cannon into the, the left handed one. And open the boat with him here. Yeah, nice shot. Well played. Um, well, if he does go on and win this frame, Mike Selby, he'll be very, very relieved going into the mid session interval. He would have feared the worst 15. when Luca was in. But this will be a definite settler for Mark Selby in this final. Twenty one. Twenty three points in the lead. Red and blue will be enough. Twenty two. As you say, Mark Selby is very relieved now to get his first frame on the scoreboard, but uh, as we said at the start, contrast of styles and it's not <laughs> letting us down so far. No. 29. It's been a, a wonderful appetizer served up from both players. Luca will, well, he'll probably be a little bit disappointed even though he will be holding a two-frame lead. Could have been better. But starting out this final... He would have been delighted with it. It's just fascinating, isn't it, John? You know, the contrast and styles, the way they play. And as you said, there's going to be many, many more frames in this best of 35 final like this. 41. Forty-seven. We started off with a forty break in this frame. He's going to finish with a fifty-four, and most importantly, his first frame on Mark the board Selby. in this final. A relieved Mark Selby goes off to the dressing room, but it's the Belgian bullet, Luca Brissel, who holds the advantage. Three frames to one. It looked for all the world that Luca Brissel was going to go four 0 up, but a really good shot from the red, Stephen, just to get position in order to launch that attack and finally get himself on the board from Selby. Yeah, a, a, a decent shot this is because you've got to swerve to put the red. So be able to get the you watch this, he swerves around the blue, and he actually gets the the the, the jaw of the pocket with the, obviously the side that's in the cue ball to go right side of the blue. If he, if he finishes wrong side of the blue, there he's got a, a job in it to get on the next red. Yeah, it's uh, and a relief, uh, a relief. Mark Selby for sure, as Ken said. Um, you know, he still feels like he's been holding on to the tiger's tail for most of this first session. Uh, Luca looks to be free flowing as he always does. Uh, doesn't seem to have a care. Uh, he'll be delighted, I think, to have got off to a good start. Mm. But he, just the way he plays, I think. You know, as we speak now, he's putting a bit of pressure on Mark Selby's game. Yeah, mm. and uh, it's down to Mark to respond. And indeed, such a contrast for the last couple of games from uh, Lucas' point of view, because against CJOE and Ronnie O'Sullivan, he was playing catch-up. So mm. to actually be front-running is, is very different for him in the last part of this championship. It is, it is, yeah. Um, and and uh, going back to, to, to Selby, Selby will want to, he'll want to be scoring, he'll want to be w when he gets in, because um, he's got to take advantage of if Luca does have a little lapse in concentration and miss his shots. OK, well, you know Luca Brussel from way, way back. Mm. In fact... Uh, he was 14 years of age, wasn't it, Stephen, when you were playing? Maybe not even that, not 13, even that. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's been on our snooker radar, really, for many, many years. And he's been living up to this child prodigy tag all of that time. Now, he's since gone on to become the most successful player from continental, mainland Europe that's ever played the game with three world-ranking titles. But he's never really got to grips with the Crucible since then. He turned up here in 2012, nicked this man's record as the youngest ever player to make it to the Crucible. But he's never been able to take a step step beyond the first round until now and now we can't stop winning
Luca, through to your first World Championship final, just sum up how you're feeling. Yeah, incredible. Uh, so relieved because the tension was getting so high at the end, you know, 16-15. Incredible comeback, the biggest comeback ever, which is quite special. So, yeah, very, very happy. Yeah, the biggest comeback in Crucible history to get the better of C. You also reeled off seven frames to get the better of the world number one, Ronnie O'Sullivan, in the quarterfinals. What does that say about your mindset? Yeah, I think it's just the way I play, you know. Once I get into rhythm, I just I just don't miss anymore. And everyone's always said it about me that if he gets into the zone, he can reel frames off quickly and win so many frames in a row. And I think I've proved it this time. And uh, so yeah, to win seven in a row against Ronnie and then 11 against C is, is incredible. And what do you do to keep your focus out there? Because you've spoken many, many times previously about how your mind can sometimes wander when you're out there. These long format games, what do you do in order to keep that concentration required? I don't know. I really don't know. It's, 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 it is a struggle to keep focused the whole game it's so long, uh, so many days and so much time in between the games as well. Um, so it's very, very tough to stay focused and uh, yeah, it's something I struggled with in the past and I still struggle with it, but I think now I'm just playing one of my, I think I'm playing my best stuff ever in this tournament. Um, and without that, I wouldn't be able to get to the final. How much work have you had to do on your mindset and your approach in snooker to get to where you are now? Um, I don't really do any work on it. Um, I just try to analyze my games and try to analyze the way I think myself. I don't really have a mental coach. I just try to do many different things and see what's best for me. And this tournament, I, I tried to not practice because I didn't want to put pressure on myself. And uh, that's why I felt so fresh mentally and um, I think it helped me. And of course, this is going to be the biggest match of your career. Do you think you'll feel any nerves out there at all? Um, not in the beginning. I will be completely relaxed and just going to be so happy to just be there in the final. And uh, uh, I've watched so many finals on television when I was young and to be involved now, especially after uh, such a comeback, is, is fantastic for me and for my family as well. And throughout this tournament, you've not really changed your approach, of course. You were going back to Belgium in the early stages, in between matches. Why was that? I just wanted to be around the people I love, you know. I, I really need that energy around me. Uh, if I just stay here on my own in my, in my hotel, I get crazy. So I, I need to have some fun and at home and just be in my comfort zone, you know. And it's great for me that, that my friends have come over now, my girlfriend's here. So I get that feeling of being at home a little bit in here as well. And yeah, it just relaxes me and it's, it's fantastic. And for you personally, how much do you think it would change your life if you're lifting that trophy come Monday evening? Yeah, it would change my life because uh, my name is going to be on the trophy forever, which is crazy. I mean, it's such a special tournament uh, to be involved in. And uh, yeah, I would fly up the rankings as well. I mean, I'm, I'm already quite high, but would be, I think I would be number two of the world. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's all dreams coming true. And now we'll talk about your opponent in the final, Mark Selby. You played him in the final, of course, of the English Open. What aspects of his game do you appreciate? So many of them, you know, he's, uh, there's not, nothing he can't do. He's, he's a good break bowler, he's a clever player. He doesn't give up. So yeah, that's the reason he's been a champion so many times and world number one for six years on the trot. So yeah, pff, there's nothing he, he can't do and uh, I'm going to be I'm going to have to play my best game to, to, give, to have a chance to beat him. We know that Mark Selby can grind players down. Are you confident that you've got the mental game to not get worn down by, by Selby? I've beaten him in the past. Obviously, best of 35 is totally different. But yeah, I believe I have because, I mean, it's a bonus for me to be in the final. So I'm going to be quite fresh mentally because there's not going to be much pressure on me. So I'm going to be ready for it, I think. And yeah, it's been a crazy story. and. Uh, I should have been out three times already and so to still be here is, is so special. And when he was first on the scene, guys, he was such a shy, introverted guy, wasn't he? I always kept himself to himself, but I, I recognise the child prodigy thing. You probably do as well, Stephen, because there was so much expectation on you in your younger years as well. It can be a very lonely place initially, can't it, that? 
It, it, it can, and, and, and as Luca was saying in the interview, um, different people have different ways of going around it. I was quite happy in my own company in a hotel room doing that. I, that didn't bother me. Mm. Obviously, he's completely different. He needs people around him. Um, so, yeah, it, it take, takes all sorts to be how they go about um, playing the game. But, yeah, from so early on, he was, he was known as being this incredible talent. Um, and it took a while, it's taken a while to be a, an established winning pro now, but um, yeah, but he still plays the same game that he played when he was 13 when I first seen him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and I think in terms of, of the appetite for snooker in mainland Europe, what could this do to the profile of the game there? We've been waiting for someone like Luca to come through and burst onto the crucible stage like this, haven't we? Well, well I think there's a lot more very good European players bubbling under as it is and obviously Belgians known about the game for so many years uh, that they've had a, a, a good grounding in that but Luke is a one-off uh, and he's resisted the temptation to toe the line in how you're supposed to be with coaching or with mindset or with what you're supposed to do before the match like mm. that silly thing like practicing <laughs> what on earth's all that about so um, I think he's an exception a fantastic exception, and it's. I heard a, a, a something on, on the floor just before we started the programme that he's wiped football off the front pages yeah. of the Belgian newspapers. Yeah. How amazing! It's the Belgian FA Cup yeah. a final, mm -hmm. I believe, today. But all of the talk is about Luca Brissel. Interesting, you mentioned the fact he's a one-off, but we've already seen Julian Leclerc, and we've seen Ben Mertens, another two Belgian players on the tour, mm -hmm. and he is leading by example. And there's so many young European players who want to follow mm -hmm. his lead. Anyway, uh, shall we talk about Mark Selby now? Because he has the chance to join these two gentlemen and Ronnie O'Sullivan as only the fourth player in history to win this title five times or more in the Crucible Theatre. Now, he's already an all-time great, Mark Selby. However, he says if he were to win a fifth, it would be the best of the lot after coming through some rather tough times off the table. Mark, your sixth final here at the Crucible. Just sum up how much this means to you. Yeah, uh, everything, you know. I mean, still feels like the first. I mean, 2007, I think it was the first time I got to the final playing John again. Still just as nervous, you know, in that semi-final there to get over the line because uh, it's such a big thing to get to the world final. You never know whether you're going to get there again. And given everything you've been through over recent years, have you come here this year maybe with more freedom than you have in the past? Yeah, I think uh, the last few months it's been like that as well, just playing with enjoyment uh, and hopefully like if, you, if you're enjoying it then you can play better snooker. So uh, yeah, I mean obviously because of enjoying it I think it's given me more of a chance this year than what it has in the previous years. And during those tough times, did you ever question whether you'd ever make it to another World Championship final? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I questioned whether I'd make it to another final, never mind a, a World Final. So to win that tournament uh, just before Christmas at the English was obviously a big monkey off my back really. And have you proven anything to yourself over the last few days, the last 15, 16 days? Because when you came here, everyone knew after winning the WST Classic, everyone knew that you were starting to find that form. But have you maybe proven something to yourself? No, I mean, I was practicing hard and I felt good on the practice table coming here. Uh, so I was quietly confident. But I mean, obviously, it's such a tough tournament. It doesn't really mean it's going to do anything. You can easily go out in the first round. But uh, yeah. Uh, to get to the final, I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, I thought, obviously, I'll, I'll do OK, but, I mean, to get to another world final is incredible, really. Do you think it would be fair to say that maybe 12 months ago you'd not have been able to grind out these results as you have at the World Championship this year? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, mentally, I just wouldn't have been strong enough last year because at one stage I was looking like, obviously, not playing in the tournament at all, so just come and enjoy it. No matter what happened, it was, it was a good place to be. And so would winning this title for a fifth time mean anything different to the four previously for you? I think if I was to win it uh, for the fifth time, I think this would be the biggest achievement out of all four. Uh, I know people say winning it for the first time is obviously a big achievement because it's sort of unknown territory. But uh, from what I've experienced the last like, few years, if I was to win it again this year, then uh, definitely it would be the biggest achievement for me by far. And winning it would be huge, but just having that joy around the table again and not feeling desensitised from what you're experiencing, would you say that's almost as big a victory for you? Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, obviously, just overcoming that hurdle. I mean, you hear a lot of horror stories that people don't overcome that hurdle, you know, and go the other way. So uh, at one stage, obviously, I didn't know where I was going to be. So to actually come out the other side of it and obviously be in a better place, uh, I'm thankful for that. 
And would you say your approach is any different now? Your mindset is any different coming to these big tournaments because of what you've experienced? Yeah, I think so. But then once I'm out there on the table, I still try as hard as any, anything, uh, as, as you can tell. But, uh, you know, I mean, going to tournaments, I go there and I think, look, obviously I want to win, but if I lose, then, you know, so be it. It's not the end of the world. And you mentioned the English Open, of course. The player you beat in the final there was Luca Brussel, the mm. player you're going to be playing in the final. What aspect of his game do you really appreciate? Uh, everything, really. I mean, he's obviously such a raw talent, you know, uh, such a great potter, good break builder, great to watch, got a bounce around the table, you know, the swagger. And uh, yeah, just great for snooker. But he is someone who, he admits himself, he struggles to concentrate and stay focused when he's in a match. Not really something that you want to be admitting before playing Mark Selby, is it? So do you feel like maybe you're ahead in that mental battle already? I'm not too sure. I think that's just obviously him as a person, you know. I just think he's just so blasé about everything. He could just like focus for four or five frames and then just switch off for, for another five. I think that's just him in general. Uh, some people are, are just bred different, you know. Obviously, I feel as though I could be out there and I could focus for hours and hours without losing it. But uh, other people are different and that's probably what makes him such a raw talent. It can just go blow you away for four or five frames or he could like miss anything and, and probably lose to anyone as well. And great to have different characters in this sport as well, really important. Yeah, and it's good to have different uh, different styles as well. I mean, obviously he's like really naturally talented. I have to like graft 25 hours a day, eight days a week to, to pot some balls. But uh, you know, that's what makes the game so good. Abby Davis, once again, asking some exceptional questions there. She's been fantastic the last couple of weeks. Um, do you think that Mark Selby receives the appreciation that he's due? He's going for a fifth world title in 10 years. No one has dominated like he has. No, uh, he, get, he gets that appreciation from the other players because they know how great a player he is. I think snooker fans and the whole cross-section of snooker fans are different beasts and some of them appreciate it and others don't like it because it see, they think that possibly he's trying to drag his opponents down. That is not what's happening, but some people's views are that way. So they're never going to particularly like the style that Mark plays, mm. but it is brilliant. You guys dominated your respective eras. Do you see the, the killer instinct um, in him that you had? Um, yeah, you have to have that, to have the success here more than, more than anywhere. Um, and he's and he's got that in, in, in bucket loads. So um, yeah, totally admire what he's done. He's a legend of the game. He is indeed, like you fellas. Okay, uh, but it's not all going his way. And in fact, you fellas and Sean Murphy noticed something a little different about his cue action last night. Uh, Sean, what do you feel was going awry, if anything? Well, when any professional players or amateurs, for that matter, Hazel, miss shots or don't hit the object ball where they mean to, it's for one of two reasons. You've either not set up correctly, i.e. aiming, you've not actually set up in the correct position, or you've not struck the cue ball in the right place. Now, the clip that I've clipped up here is a really good example of this. What you can see here is, as I draw a line through Mark Selby's line of aim through the cue, middle of the cue ball, you can actually see there that he's aiming to almost miss the red and catch it super thin. Now, if I let it run on, you'll very quickly see that actually the cue comes across the ball to his left, and so he's not actually struck the cue ball in his intended strike position. He meant to hit it into the middle, and he actually hit it to the left. That pushes the cue ball off to his right over here, and in the end, he actually missed the ball altogether. As we come across to the table to try and show what that means in real life, if I set up to the ball correctly, i.e. through the middle of the pocket, the middle of the ball, and the object ball, and I hit the cue ball where I mean to, the ball must go in. But if I strike it just to the left, as I'm about to now, left of centre, the object ball can't go in the pocket. In fact, it can't go anywhere near. So the idea with the top players, certainly, is to make sure that their sighting is correct, they aim the ball in the middle of the pocket, you're looking at the middle of the object ball, through to the middle of the cue ball, and the important bit is to hit that cue ball exactly where you mean to. And it's as simple as that. If only I'd done that in my match. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, we always take it on the chin. See, Joe, we did all right, didn't we? Uh, against Sean and indeed against a lot of others here. He's been the real star of the show. But it's Luca Brissell who's the man in control at the moment. Now, you were noticing one or two technical flaws, for want of a better word, in uh, Mark Selby's game. Uh, brilliantly demonstrated by, by Sean there, wasn't it? Especially under pressure with Mark in the background. <laughs> that's quite tough to do because you don't want to sort of like, you know, undermine a player who's in there, but that's just the nature of where the TV studios are and the practice tables. But I think it's fair to say that the, the player that's queuing the best and maybe queuing the best in the tournament is Luca Brussel. Mm. Uh, the freedom of queuing. Mm. Uh, and even though he has such a long, flowing action, which we would say is, is susceptible to mis misalignment and queuing offline, He's striking the ball with such authority, it's ramrod straight. Uh, and that's a dangerous nuka player. Yeah, and, and aligned with the confidence, and you used the word swagger mm -hmm. yesterday, there's a lot of that now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some of the shots he plays, he played a black there with drag, and it gives me nightmares even thinking about playing it <laughs> without about, you know, a six feet backswing. You, because the deceleration comes into it, but he manages to keep the cue going through positively. It's beautiful to watch. It is, and so far it's been very effective because it's the new boy in the final who leads the veteran. enjoying our opening instalment of this year's Kazoo World Championship final. It's the Belgian Bullets. Luca Brassell, who has sped away in this opening session. Four more frames to play this afternoon with another nine to play this evening on this opening day. And we'll hand you straight back to Ken and John. Thank you, frame five. Luca Brassell to break. Thank you, Hazel. As we all know, four sessions, but already you get the feeling this crucible crowd are just loving what they've seen so far. Nothing like the crucible, as far as snooker's concerned. But this red, left on, and not close to the ball cushion. He knocked in one more difficult than this earlier on. One. Overhit that. So no pot to go at. Just seems always off a break off you're going to leave that type of red. Mark Selby. As I say, no colour available. Contented himself with the snooker. Just thinking back, Ken, to that frame before the mid-session interval. They're the frames when you sat in your seat, as Mark Selby would have been thinking, I'm going to be 4 nil down here. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you get a chance. And they're a real bonus, those frames. Oh, yeah. And it can be the difference, you know. I know still early stages, but... Sometimes you look back on frames like that and it just change matches. Pretty good. And Luca Vassell, he's covered this red into the left corner. He's left the red into the right corner. Yeah, but sometimes even over the best of 35, John, you look back on, on certain frames, and I got back to that frame against Mark Allen that Mark Selby won when needing the snooker, and it changed the whole complexity of the match. Instead of being 7-3, it was 6-4, and then he went on a run. And that's what he'd be hoping for in this next four frames. Doesn't fancy the one to the right corner. Too dangerous. Trying to come round with two cushions just to nestle up to the back of this red. Is it hard enough? No, Foul. it's not. Look at myself. Well, Luca, he's having a look to see whether this red passes <laughs> the blue. 
If it doesn't, he'll have it put back. Looking at every opportunity to get on the front foot. Back. It doesn't pass the blue. But once again, we see the intent. Well, that was the burning question, wasn't it, before this final? How was Luca going to deal with the safety prowess of Mark Selby? Well, those opening frames told us exactly how he's going to deal and what his philosophy will be in this final. <laughs> now he's going to have a look at it again. Does it go this time? the blue no so no you'd need all the pockets to be available so i play thin off this red closest to the cue ball but be mindful of the red adjacent to the right corner he's got to cover the path to that He doesn't like the up to ball can safety. I've never seen Luca take this long over a shot, but he just wants to have it clear in his own mind. You play to the ball can, you could leave the pot on, so the right shot. Oh. Well, it didn't go. <laughs> no, it didn't go. Now, don't tell me there's a gap to it. <laughs> Not, it doesn't appear on this occasion. <coughs> and there's a gap, but not enough of one. Although Mark Selby, not convinced. I'm well, just wondering, could he swerve around that blue? It would be very tight. Could go into the green. Think, well, that'd be some shot. Full end to the table. He's going for it. Swerving around the blue here. Right hand side. Just got to miss the blue. Avoid the green. Oh! Well, in the end, he swerved it too much. Didn't think he could hit him up much of the red, but well, it was very adventurous, and he's left a nice, easy starter for Luca. One. Yeah, that red just above the black. We'd love to get on that and just clear that area above the black and make a big difference here. And he's played that nicely off two cushions. Lots of left hand side. Eight. Perfect on this red. Nine. Red's uh, nicely situated. Doesn't have to play <coughs> cannons for the foreseeable future. Just pick off the loose ones. I've, Six. I've spotted a red that's closest to the cue ball now goes to the left corner. 17.
No, he just didn't get into those reds enough. He's still on the red. 24. I mentioned, but we can cue past the red closest mm. to the cue ball, so it's just a case of potting it. I'm not certain the blue goes to the left, middle. So up for a bulk colour. Could have been easier. Twenty-five. And of course, that red is next to the blue. That makes it easier for him for his next positional shot. He could play on that red. Doesn't have to. He could play on one of these reds, left or right of the pink. Played that nicely. Twenty-seven. Yeah, 20. the reason Ken said that. He finished perfect on the red, so being perfect on the red, he was bound to be perfect on the blue. Cue ball control at its best. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Once again, nicely cued. Get top side of the blue. Please switch your phones off or on silent. Thank you. Just he stayed down on the 39. shot. Thirty-nine. The shot was here. Even though it could have broke his concentration, but he's very much zoned in. And there's another. Well, that could have gone wrong. He could have hit it too much. But perfect on the blue. As you said, Jonas, cue ball control has been exemplary. Choice of two reds to play on here, just at the back of the pack. Forty-five. Forty-six. No, a little bit straighter on the black than he would have liked. This could be the key shot to the frame coming up here. If he can solve this little problem, get nicely on the next red frame at his mercy. Fifty-three. Fifty-four. So this is the shot. Perfect on the blue. You feel he's going to have to play a little cannon. A little shake of the head. He's perfect on the blue. I don't know what else he expected. Do you play to drop? Not with any speed, but just drop on the pink? Yeah, that would be the shot. He's got to go in to the pink. He could lose the cue ball. There is a gap between the pink and that extreme red on the right-hand side. That's what he's fearful of, going through that gap. So he's got to make a good connection here and just hope he can get on a red. There's the connection. And he's OK. He's on the bottom red. Yeah, he didn't risk playing it gently. 59. Give it a bit more pace. It's worked out nice. 60. So just this black to get to snook is required. 67. Not got position on the red. 67. 70 points to lead. He could do with that in. Keep Mark Selby in his seat. Well, will it? Look at Bissell. 67. Mark Selby had a look at the scoreboard. 70 points of difference, 59 remaining. 
that equates to four. Stop calling out now, please. Four, four point snookers. Not many players would play on, but you know, Mark Selby will. One. But maybe not for long. Not on the colour. If he misses this, it'll be the concession. But in it goes, keeping his faint hopes alive. 64 points of difference, 51 remaining. Six. Seven. Yeah, he'll definitely put one more red and black after this and keep the last remaining red on the table, just in case the possibility of getting 14. maybe a free ball. 50. <coughs> but still, very tall order indeed. Twenty-two. So, cue ball up and balk. You would say maybe try and get that red behind the black. <coughs> Mark Selby, twenty-two. It's no good. Luca, as we Seven. know, likes to get on with it. And Mark just slowing that frame down. He'd be glad to see the back of that red. And of course, no way back to the Ten. table now for Mark Selby. What a start from this young man from Belgium. You talk 40. about ours being in the final of the World Championship, going to affect him. And so far, he is absolutely loving it. Nineteen. Never look like going in. <laughs> right, and Luca Purcell, the nineteen. The and the another sparkling frame from Luca Purcell. He's three clear once again. Four one. Yep, 4-1 for Luca Bricell, and in fact, this is the mirror 
opposite of the last time they met, actually, which was in the English Open final just before Christmas. It was Selby who established a 4-1 advantage over Luca and went on to win that one 9-6. So this time it's the young man from Belgium who's made a really fast start. And he appears, Stephen and Steve, to be absolutely loving it, as John says out there, thriving. Well, it, I mean, he just looks like he's... I don't know, where, where would you be sitting and look that relaxed? <laughs> Sat in the reception the hotel, you know, in your room or where you know, I mean it just looks like it's 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 just easy. And that's that's the worst thing probably for Mark Selby watching him putting balls it just looks like he's not got a care in the world. Well, it's the four time champion with a whole lot of work to do as we go into frame six. Yeah, three more frames to play in this session. Selby would be helping too. Well try and win a all of them. He's got a bit to do. He's got to up his game. Yeah, we didn't know what to expect, did we, from Luca coming into this final? Was he going to feel a little bit of nerves? Was there going to be some sort of hangover from that amazing semi final? And creating history of the greatest comeback in the, the crucible. Would have that affected him? But at the moment, shown no signs, only good ones. <coughs> An interesting stat as well, John, that Max Elby has played 11 hours on the table more than Luca Brussel in this championship. Will that have some sort of an effect? It could well do, couldn't it? That's a long time, isn't it? 11 hours. Pretty well struck. And if he covers the red in the bulk end with the green, he'd be happy with that. Well, Mark can kick this red up the table, but he can't get a good cue ball. This match so far being at a, played at a pace, which maybe is just slightly unsettling Mark Selby. Mm. Doesn't have much time to get back to his seat, because then he's on his way back again. Luca really has up the pace. Just give me one second, Luca. Please, this is the third time I've asked. Can you please make sure your phones are on silent or turned off? Thank you. <laughs> Another cross over, and I think the cue ball isn't going to get past the ball. Point no. Quick look at the brown. What sort of an angle? Doesn't look great. Yeah, judging by his facial expression, no, he's got a slight angle. I mean, you're going to have to play this at pace. Pace to these middles, you've got to be accurate. You've got to be very accurate. Oh, he's going into the red. Can you believe it? <laughs> and he's on one at the bottom of the pack. <laughs> Extraordinary. Five. <laughs> Can you believe that shot? Oh, this is just fantastic. Absolutely Six. brilliant. What a shot maker. This guy is okay. A little flick off the green obviously helped, but oh, what a brave shot. Could get his rewards. Thirty. Forty. This time, well, we'll go up for the blue. This one loose red, but 21. what a lovely target. The pink and that red to the left of it. If he gets nicely on the blue, 20. needs to run, though. 
No, he'll have to play for the loose red. He'll be a little bit disappointed. I'm going to hit that slightly, but the one thing I've noticed about Luca 27. over the years I've been watching, very good with the rest. Seven. Well, I just called it as it was. Hmm. Pity, but it was all due to the fact they didn't get good angle on the blue. And he should have done. One. Try and I think that red just to the left of the black will pot into this bottom left corner pocket. He's just having a look at that. Yeah, there you see it. So he'd like to drop on that from the blue if he can. That would open up the black, of course, into both corner pockets. May have to use the top cushion here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Six. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, I think he has the angle to go into the pack, maybe playing for the red close to this top cushion. And now needs a nice angle. I'm potting this red on the black to try and disturb those 22. five reds beneath the pink. Twenty-three. Looks pretty good. Now if you get through right through the gap here from black to the middle red of the five, that would be ideal. Didn't hit the middle red. Now, is he on a red into the middle? I think they're all covering each other. Oh. Hit the wrong red there. Well, he's looking the red straight in line. I'm just wondering if he can get to the red below the pink. He obviously can't. He could have been playing it by now, and he's looking to play this red in the left middle. This is not easy. Mark Selby, 30. Well, you could say he's a little unlucky with the cannon, but you always need a little bit of good fortune when you go into the reds like that. Chance missed. Oh. Well, if anything, he's just let the cue ball just slip away. A lot of players would have played that and come round off two cushions. I think he's just about okay. He may even be able to get a little cannon on that red just below the pink. Well, he got into it too much. Is he on the red? I'm looking at his body language. He's walking round positively. Eight. He's on it.
Nein. The last shot, the black. There's a man complete confidence of his cue action and his technique. No hesitation whatsoever. Perfect cannon on the red to hold for the other one. He's had a quick glance at the scores. Pink will put him 12 points in the lead, so he's going to need one of the 50. difficult reds that are close to the left-hand side cushion. After he takes Six. the loose reds, of course. And so he's just walking out. So that will be the crucial part of the frame, you feel, John? Yeah, absolutely. 22. Got the red. Well, the two reds are up near the blue. and He's looking to see if he could leave an angle on the pink this time around, because he knows he's got that red adjacent to the right middle. This is good thinking. This is his snooker brain ticking over. Leave an angle on the pink to try and disturb those two reds near the left-hand cushion. 23. Thinking he's bound to be on the red to the right middle. Has he got the angle? Didn't have the angle. So now we'll have to try again. This time off the blue. 29. It's all about fractions this game, as we say many times. Perfect angle on the blue, it shouldn't be a problem developing the reds. But got to get it. 30. He's got a perfect angle, hasn't he? He could just play off one cushion, just knock the first red just out of the way. Well, you said it's all about fractions, and well, there you have it. You got a slight contact on one of the reds, but 35. not enough. So, frame still in the balance. Have a look at this, how close he was. Little flick off that red. Not the one he wanted. And now. This is Mark Selby's part of the game. Two reds on the table. Forget the scoreline. I know you make Luca Brissell a favourite, but this man, the master tactician. Can Luca get the better of this exchange? This red, it's in the pink. Well, the only oh, upside for Luca, he's not the pink safe. That wasn't a good safety. But as we noticed last night, and we're seeing it again today, he's not firing on all cylinders. Catching, and he's left it. I think this red is cuttable. Natural path of the cue ball will be back towards that blue. Yeah, and if he gets a nice angle One. on the blue, he could get well, either bring the red into play or. Knock it out. There is plenty of room in around the back of it, so he could play. Not disturb it at all, just play for it into this left corner. He will need the rest, of course, but that won't bother him. Yeah, he's just got to miss the red. He's played it perfectly. Great shot. Wonderful shot. Six. 
if he gets this red, John, gets on the black, well, that pink could become very, very crucial. Luca knocked it safe on his poor safety shot a couple of moments ago. But it's still a lot of work to do for Max Elby here. 86% pot success tournament. Pot success with the rest. There's another one. Make that 87. Okay. And he's got an angle on the black. Get up close to the yellow. Big moments in this frame in session. Great shot. <laughs> How far to the tent you thought there to try and release the pink. Yeah. If he hadn't made contact with the pink, he wouldn't have had as good a position on the yellow as he has. But he's maybe thought it was worth the risk. He's just looking now where he likes to leave the cue ball. This green is, is a little bit awkward. It's not straightforward, and particularly you have to do a little bit of work with the cue ball. Could make it missable. 60. Yeah, I think it was very unlucky there. Potting that black just to land dead straight on the yellow. He couldn't get close to the green, so... Yeah, as you say, John, it's, it's not a gimme this at all. And he's desperately... Well, he didn't want to use the rest. Going for his extension. And your hand on the table makes it obviously a bit easier, particularly if you're having to play with a little bit of side. Tough shot. Good pot, no position. And what do you do here? He's looking at the scoreboard. He needs that pink in the open. Does he try and bring it into the open here using the cue ball, or does he just get that cue ball down behind the black? He's trying to get the cue ball behind the black. Clock serving 90. Needs to miss it. Ooh. Good effort. We got the second part of the equation correctly. We're getting that brown safe. Well, that was a very well played shot there from Luca. We see players now play side to side safety because when you play that shot that Lucas just played, there's always a danger and double kiss. Played it beautifully. left this. He's left a pot on here. Luca Brazel comes to the table, 13 points in front. Brown blue for 5-1. Oh. Oh, good pot. Couldn't avoid the black. Four. But he'd be happy to see that black go close to that ball cushion. 17 ahead, 18 remaining. Does he take the blue one? You just know he is. <laughs> it's a case of which pocket. Please, out of courtesy and respect for the players, will you turn your phones off? I really don't want to ask anybody to leave, but if another one goes, I will. So please turn them off. Yeah, here, here. Well said, turn them off. Oh, 
this cue ball. It's gone close to the black. Self -up. But the blue has gone safe. He'd be happy with that. Didn't hit it very well, but it's okay, it's run safe. Not quite certain that was as intended. Got such insurance with that pink. And Mark Selby, of course, none whatsoever, with his opponent just needing the blue. You know, sometimes you think, well, maybe I can get a snooker in, in behind the black here, but He's got to get the blue safe. Yeah, and that black is slightly in the way to try and knock the blue around like four or five cushions back down towards the black spot. It was a clever shot trying to knock the blue onto the pink. But, well, decision for Luca Brissell. With the insurance of the pink being saved, the black Safe-ish, will he take this blue on? Might be worth having a go. He had a go. With the blue. Players like to get in behind sometimes, cushion first, but I think the blue's too close to the ball cushion for that. Plays that shot well though, doesn't he? Well, he's left a cut, possible cut. Mark Selby may be tempted. The only thing is, when it's this thin, if you get close to pot and it doesn't go in, invariably, you leave it. Can he take the chance? Maybe a cross double here for Luca into the right middle pocket. It's definitely on. He likes playing them. It's definitely on. Ooh. When he had a similar shot to this Mark Selby a few visits ago, he tried to send the blue off side cushion, bolt cushion, and run it into the the pink to bring the pink into play. He nearly got it, but it is risky. If the blue does run into the pink, you're not certain where the blue's going to finish. Contented himself with just the safety. couple of times Lucas played up and down the spots with the blue and he's played it pretty well this time he's 
chose to try and get that blue on the left hand side cushion would he be happy with that good cue ball oh this is difficult for Mark Selby that was an excellent shot it's almost straight the double kiss is on if he tries to knock the blue down towards his top end of the table and assume with the black being near the ball cushion the quarter ball clip off the blue to send it to the ball cushion if you don't hit it right the cue ball could run into the black clever shot from Luca Just avoided the double kiss by a whisker. Mm. Where's the blue cuttable? Into the left center. He'll come and have a look at the angle. <laughs> well, what's he doing? Have a look on the TV screen? He was having a look at the scores, I think. I think this blue is on, John. We might cut this in. It might yeah. be worth having a go. I'm worried about the cue ball towards the right corner here. I'm worried about the cue ball. <coughs> missed the pot. Missed the enough. Gets the pot. I think he may have gone enough there. Anyway. It's safe. Well, our four cushions behind the black, maybe. No. Blue. The middle of the ball cushion. He's played a pretty good shot. <laughs> He's got wonderful patience, as Mark Selby. Excellent. At these type of situations. Yeah, when you play that side to side, if you get the cue ball higher than the object ball, it's usually a pretty good shot, although could be a possibility here, Mark getting a snooker behind the black. I always felt, Ken, I don't know about you, that when a, your opponent needs a snooker, try and leave as much distance as you can between cue ball and object ball. That's pretty good. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean a snooker, I meant gives him a chance if you leave cue ball and object ball together. Gives him a chance to either lay a snooker or play a towing safety shot. Well, he doesn't want this blue to bounce. Mm. Is it cuttable? If it isn't, good chance to get the cue ball in behind the black, you would have thought. Yeah, it was a dangerous shot from Mark Selby. Well, is he going to have a go? I think he's trying to cut it in. I think he's trying to cut it in. Oh, what a shot. Five. Wow. The pot. Well, 
Is Mark Selby going to come to the table? He's Look 22 points Five. in arrears. Only 13 remaining to snookers required. What's a pot on that blue? This pink's close to the pocket. And it's in the pocket, so that is the end of the frame. So look at Brissell. Well, you've just got to admire the way he's playing at the moment. And he's really in full flow. And he now leads by four. 5-1. Yep, it's the uh, finals first timer, Luca Brissell with a 5 1 lead. We were racking our brains. I'm going back to 2004, Graham Dot, 5 0 up on Ronnie O'Sullivan. A lot of us were saying, OK, this is on, and this certainly is. How brave, how committed is this young Belgian player, and where do we see it? Uh, I mean, you talk about swagger and the way he plays snooker. I mean, the, this brown um, into the middle pocket. I mean, it's just, look, it's just wonderful. It's just like playing with. You know, no thoughts of, of anything but just attack, all out attack. How can I possibly find a way to get Reds out to continue this break? And it's just, it's just great to watch. We were talking about the top spin that he had to generate. For, mm. for, tell us exactly what he was trying to do and how difficult that is to achieve. Well, I mean, a lot of players are pretty decent in the screwback department these days, but topspin is just as important. And to get maximum topspin on, you have to get very high up the cue ball, and there's the risk you could miscue the other way. Mm. So you've really got to strike the ball well. And we talk about the fact he's got such a long backswing. So he pulls the cue all the way back. He's got to get it a long way to get to the right mm. point. It's just natural talent he's got in abundance. And he's surprising everybody. But, importantly, he's, su he's surprising everybody in the safety department. Yeah. So Mark hasn't got the better of him in that department at all. Yeah, and we saw that the opposite. We've seen the power shots. We've seen the thinnest of cuts to the blue mm. also in that one. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so thin. I mean, obviously, if he missed it, he leaves it over the pocket. But um, at the minute... He's confident. Thank He's you, five one up, seven. and there's there's no Good fear at all. Break. It's one way traffic. A bit pacey with the cue ball. Left the red to the right corner, as he seems to have done. Off every break or shot. Slight angle. Could play for the black. I think it may be available. But when you're four frames behind, there's a little bit of pressure on these. Yeah. Couldn't cue the ball any better than that. Magnificent long pot, Max Selby. Can you get on the black here and try and Four. dislodge those reds just above it? Could play for the pink as well into the left center. But black is probably the better option. I think this is an important visit for Mark. Just had the one break over 50 in this session. Now, normally you'd say, well, his opponent playing so well, but he has had the chances to score heavy. And not taking them so far. Give me a second mark, please. Brendan Moore asking for Mark to give him a second, so obviously pink spot not available. Just to remind you, because as close as it can to its own spot, if there's no other spots available. Oh, you can't get on there, can you? 
Well, he thinks he can. Thank you. Well, Eleven. That's a bit of spotting. I'm very surprised I'm playing for pink there. Maybe a plant on here. But yeah, if you played for the black earlier from that previous red, well, it would be a bit more straightforward. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 12. And it's, it's, it's amazing. I've never seen balls rattle in the jaws so much and then somehow drop. Amazing. Well, I know they have a fall on the slate, but it's quite amazing. I mean, Luke has had two or three Seven. of them. Eighteen. Now, what can he do with this black one potting it? Can he bring some reds into play around that pink and black area? Or does he play on a loose red? Black ball. Needs a bit of luck. Has he got it? Where does the black go? Goes on its spot. He has a red then. 25. Open to the green pocket. Possible red into the right centre pocket. Twenty-six. Yeah, couldn't do much with the cue ball. Couldn't get the right angle of the blue, but just got to avoid the bulk colours here. Not certain about the availability of the pink and black now, but just got to find this line, probably down the right-hand side of the table as we look. Oh, he's cued that beautifully. Couldn't hit a ball better than that. Good shot. 31. Judged that nicely for that red, just below and to the right. 37. Of the pink spot, so imperative this time. It gets a nice angle, I'm going up for the blue. 38. Mm, looks a little bit short. Dead straight, so mid-distance red to follow. There's extra pressure on these type of shots. You don't normally expect them to miss it, but when you're 5-1 down and your opponent's being dominated in the match. Missable. Oh, no problem. Nicely into the four. middle of the pocket. And that will give him a bit of confidence because that was a little tester. But once again, nicely into the middle.
having to work very, very hard to construct this break. 49. Yeah, it's back up for the blue. He did have a quick look at the red immediately above the black. He could pop that and bring the black into play, but... 50. No point taking any undue risks here. I posed the question at the start of this visit. How could he score? And so far, this is superb break building from Mark Selby. Just having a look at the possibility. The red immediately above the black. If you could drop on that, you could play a little cannon on the pink and red and be on the black. That's what he's playing for. Don't want to be too straight on it. And he is. 55. Yeah, he wanted an angle to stun over and cannon into the pink, so back up for the blue. But this time, it's not that easy. No, oh, but he is blessed, isn't he, with a lot of cue power. You need it here to get it on the cue ball. Mm, 50 short. So he's still not <laughs> over the line just yet. 56 in front, still 67 remaining. This blue, one more red will be enough, but this is difficult enough to get down onto one of these reds. Lots of side spin. Has he hit it too much? Is there, if he kisses the pink, he'd be okay. He has done, what a shot. What a shot from Max Albee. 61. Lots of right hand side on that cue ball. Excellent. Sixty-two. And that will clinch the frame. Tremendous contribution from the four times champion of the world. Well, well, Mark playing Selby. it with left hand 62. side. Sixty-two points to lead, still fifty-nine remaining. Just one snooker required. Could he regret that? One. Just playing it with left hand side Eight. to play for the red in the opposite corner. Just didn't allow for the throw of the side. Sorry, right hand side he was playing with. Playing the double. Mm. Is it there? No, it's not there. Has he left it? I think he has. Eight. Well. It's covered. And you, well, normally you think, well, you could swerve this, but why would you do that when your opponent needs snookers? Mm. Very clever. Just tells us uh, his heart wasn't in it, playing for snookers. That was not the right shot, but I'm not going to criticise him. Every snooker player's choice as to what shot they play. See, 58 points, the difference, 51 remaining.
Needs to be on the black, really. Ooh, we put a lot of check side on. Didn't want to kiss the brown. Mm. From two snookers, it's going to be three. Well, he's going for the black. <laughs> yeah, I think he. Oh, well, that's it. Look at the cell one. Never felt his half seven. In all honesty. Well, Selby won't mind. He's got another frame on the board. Still trails by three. Yep, the champ punches back. Four-time champion of the world, Mark Selby, and that is his biggest break in this final so far. That contribution of 62. Fascinating there because clearly left Luca with a chance, and that could have been a sore one. He's come through it, though. Yeah, it, it was an excellent response from Mark Selby. Obviously, you know, you can't be feeling that great out there, but... Um, his temperament kicked in and he grafted his way to that particular frame. Uh, he'd have liked to have probably, you know, converted the whole break and, and made a century or something similar, but uh, it'd be feel a little bit more comfortable now. Yeah, I, I, he needs to start scoring, I think, for, for his own confidence as much as to send a message to his opponent, you know, because it's not going to intimidate Luca if Mark's... Luca, Luca expects Mark to win these frames, the scrappy frames. That wouldn't surprise him. What would put him on the back foot is if Mark starts piling in some real heavy breaks. Mm. Well, interesting that uh, Selby's obviously going to come out of this first session behind in it, but um, for the Selby fans, I should tell you that he's been behind after the first session in three of his four wins here to Ronnie O'Sullivan, John Higgins and Sean Murphy in 14, 17 and 21. In fact, the only time he's actually been up after the first Thank session you, was against Ding Jun Wei in 2016. Final frame but of this by session. how much Mark will Selby's he trail? Three. This final frame of the session will tell us. Final frame of this session. And <coughs> Max Elby cut his arrears to just two, or will Luca enjoy the four frame lead? Big frame. It's very early days, but it's an unusual stat, that, isn't it? Three of his four final wins, Max Elby was behind, and three of those finals. Yeah. Luca had a simple escape there, or two cushions, and it nearly went wrong. Well, I say it nearly went wrong. Does this red to the right of the black? Can he get to it? Maybe he can. The one closest to the cue ball. Very thin. Very thin. But firing across it possible Six. Mark Selby six. He's left it. Now, do we see a very well, extravagant shot here from Luca? He could. Pot the red. Lots of pace into the pack of reds. Reds could go everywhere. That's what he's playing. Now is he on a colour? <laughs> is he on a colour? I think he's on a colour. I think he's on the yellow or even the pink. But what a shot to play. The World Championship final. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> he really is. He's so talented, John, and such an entertainer. How well did he hit Three. that? Now then, big question. Does the black go into the right corner?
It does. So one precise positional shot here. If you can get on the black, what a chance to end this session. Four frames ahead. Four. Just under hit it slightly, but he's, he's on it in a fashion. Another few rolls of that cue ball, he would have been perfect. It's there. Now, when it's respotted, does it put still pot? No, yeah. it doesn't. So now he's going to have to concentrate on the port colours and the blue. Maybe ball to play for is the blue. Screw across. Possibly have a shot at the pink as well. Well, that's beautifully played. Now then, he'll have a look, see where the pink's going to go. Pink on its spot, blue on its spot. His choice. But two high-value colours in play. That's the important thing. If he does part the pink, it may go on the blue spot. 60. <laughs> 70. Nice for blue or pink here. I think the reason he turned blue or pink down the last visit was he just wasn't happy with the angle. He can cue past the green. Yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, the pink going on the blue spot is fine, but once the pink spot comes clear, then the pink could get tied up, whereas the blue will always be in the middle of the table. I'm just wondering, John, can he go into the reds here and try and develop some? Should be on a red into the left corner. He, do it. he has, and he's played it very nicely. Very nicely indeed. Always looking for the attacking option. Mm. It could have been a bit nicer for him. This red is into the left corner. Well, the angle is not perfect for him. It could be, if he screws back, it could be going into the red just above it. Mm. Unless he plays it into the left half of the pocket, just to try and avoid those reds on the way back. Yeah, just about. Twenty-three. The top side of the blue. Just about. Excellent shot. Important now, he gets good angles on the red to 28. get back up the blue. Get good angles on the blue. Mm, this one is a little bit tricky. Screws back to the cushion, he could go in off here. But he was 29. aware of that, played a stun screw. Just gets down and play these, what looks like slightly difficult shots with gay abandon. <laughs> Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Yeah, it's just a wonderful swashbuckling cavalier style, and it's great to see, great to watch. He's got all the shots, and as you said, John, he's 
blessed with a, a snooker brain as well. 40. Just sees the shot 41. very, very quickly. What he wants to develop. Gets down and plays it. No messing around. Great stuff. I think the other thing as well, Ken. Temperament. Mm. I mean, 46. this performance is uh, remarkable, really. 47. As we said, the first round was the first time he'd ever won a match here in the final of the World Championship. And he's just playing as though he's in the club back home in Belgium, just walking around the table, 52. knocking balls in. Just a... Few reds away from victory now in this frame. Once again, 53. absolutely inch perfect. Can do what he likes with this blue. <laughs> Just the red required. But he knows 58. he needs a colour and another red to keep Mark Selby in his seat. Fifty-nine. Wonderful. Cooper get top spot of the blue once again. Made that look very, very easy. So, difference is fifty-eight, fifty-one remaining. So just sixty-four. Make sure it is red into the left corner. Sixty-five. Yeah. Wonderful break, and he's had to work very hard. The opening red was excellent into the pack. No hesitation whatsoever. Took his chance. Nice. 70. It's just been a magnificent break. Great finish to the session. Oh. Mark Selby, we'll give him the hand. He says congratulations. And it's Luca Brissett, who's done all the running in this first session. He leads the four-time champion by six frames to two. So Brazil bounces into tonight's second session and he really has had an explosive start, has the Belgian bullet here. Um, I wonder how much of a surprise this is to you guys, Stephen and Steve, if at all. Um, no, I don't think it's a surprise because I think coming through the championship that he's come through, the players that he's beat, he should be flying mm. now in the final, he should be. And that's exactly what he did this afternoon. He stamped his authority on this final. How much freedom, how much confidence is he playing with out there? Well, he, he continues to astonish with his shots. Uh, you know, take uh, this yellow he takes on. It's not just the way, uh, just the pot, because you know reds are everywhere. It's the authority he puts into the shot. So he bashes the yellow in. Um, I'm not too sure if we got it. We, oh, maybe not. Sorry. He, he pots. Yes, he, we do. Yes. Just, just watch this. We need to watch this, but before otherwise, what am I saying? So all of a sudden. He's, he smashes the reds up, mm. gets all over the place. Blue gets off its spot, yellow, pinks. He's all over the place. He's now got a pot after a great shot, this very difficult yellow. It's easy to pot the yellow, but he doesn't get position. Powers it in, mm. and he is queuing beautifully at the moment. If he continues his form, he's really throwing Mark Selby out of his comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, it, it's tough to continue it, but at the moment, he's doing a great job of it. And what's also interesting is the pace at which this final is being played. And you were making a, the point, actually, when we were just chatting here, Stephen, that he's forcing the pace. It's Mark that's having to play at his pace here. Yeah, well, it is an open game. I mean, even the safety shots, the, the, there's no real sort of bits of tactical, you know, sort of, you know, 10, 15 minutes like there wasn't at the, the Allen semi-final. So the game is being played in a more positive manner. And Mark Selby's going to try and keep up. Well, there's the scene in Mark Selby's dressing room. He's got a lot to think about here for you. What needs to improve in fast? Uh, well, I think Mark just needs to be more accurate, but it's tough when you're against somebody who's playing very accurately anyway. He's got to score, basically. That's the only way he's going to put pressure on, on Luca Brasell, I think. 
Well, he's made eight centuries in this championship so far. Luca Bursell has made nine, but a lot of thinking to do for Mark Selby. Uh, he was actually 6-2 behind against John Higgins in the 2017 final and came back to turn that one around and win 18 frames to 15. But against this guy, who's playing with that level of confidence, that swagger you mm. talked about, how important that he can continue this momentum and this confidence level? Um, it's uh, the way that he plays with this casual attitude that, that uh, it, I, I can't really see him being under pressure in this final. I think Mark Selby's just got to play brilliant snooker. That's how he gets back into it. OK, it'll be fascinating to watch. And uh, as you know, this Crucible final is a box set drama over four instalments, episodes, sessions, call them what you like, but there are many dramas within the drama, aren't they? And the next one, well, not long to wait at all for it to start at 7 o'clock on BBC Two. Meanwhile, faster than a speeding Belgian bullet. What an explosive start for Luca Brussel. We'll catch you again very soon.